Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number nine at Keeneland on Bluegrass Saturday is the grade two Shake Shake Shaker Town going five and a half furlongs on the turf. Let's take a look at this field. $350,000 is the purse. It is a big full field. You've got a Godolphin Invader from overseas and the three Mischief Magic. You've got Arzak, who won last year's Woodford during the Keeneland Fall Meet. You've got the rock solid Beer Can Man. This is a good group. Yeah, typical of, of turf sprints, especially at Keeneland at the graded stakes level. Big field, a lot of different horses can win. We'll see who winds up tripping out here. We got a big competitive field. And surprisingly, according to our friends at Timeform US, we don't have a lot of speed. <laughs> it's a blue situation. Blue bar favoring front runners. Yes, I am free. Didn't draw an ideal post position, but I guess with his speed, he can break out of there running along with the 11 Coppola, who's more of a tactical uh, type. Yes, I am free is going to be on a send mission. I think bad beat Brian's going to be show a lot of speed in here because he has that in him. He just doesn't always show it. I agree. I think there are a couple of horses you could say that about though in this field, Dan. So I think, you know, we'll see how it all plays out, but I think you're going to see more than one horse towards the inside come out of there running to look for position. And, you know, listen, yes, I am free. Is he a fast horse or was he a fast horse? Yes. Post 12 feels like it's a really tough position for this horse to break to break from Dan because he just doesn't seem like he's as good as he used to be. And if the pace isn't fast, it could work against the late closers. And one of them is the number one, Eamon, making his third start of the form cycle for Joe Orsino. He was a winner over this distance at Monmouth in a little stakes race, the Select, last summer. And he's a horse that he could pretty much guarantee will give a good solid account of himself as he did last time out in the Gulfstream turf sprint. The problem is he has no speed. And coming from last, going five and a half on the turf, it's not an easy proposition. Yeah, it's, you got a lot working against you there, at least if you like this horse. And I, I will say, he put in a big finish last time to just come up short. I mean, he really ran at the end of that race. And if you like this horse, he's going to be a price in here, Dan. Maybe it won't set up for him. Maybe he's not even the best closer in this race. I don't think that he is. But he's going to be a price, and he ran well last time. I don't think you want to sleep on the two so Sua Summer going out for trainer Bill Mott because this horse proved last time out that he can adapt to any sort of pace scenario. The Duncan Kenner going five and a half at the fairgrounds was not run at a breakneck speed. There was one speed in the race, so Sua Summer got close, wore him down late. The third place finisher came back to win the Colonel Power and off turf with a 102 buyer. We'll see him in the Commonwealth at Keeneland as well. This horse, I think, is just lurking under the radar. Yeah, I think that's probably true. And I say that as someone who, you know, listen, followed his career for most of the time here in New York. And I've, listen, never gotten stakes vibes from this horse. He's always been pretty good. He always shows up. I was never looking for this horse to break through um, in races like the Shaker Town. But maybe he can do it, uh, Dan, because you're right. The thing that the takeaway from his most recent start is the trip that he pulled. And he can pull that one here, too. Over the last several years, when Godolphin and Charlie Appleby send one over to the States, you got to pay attention. The three Mischief Magic, he's raced once already in the States. It was at Keeneland. It was in 2022, and he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. Now, he hasn't turned out to be that kind of horse overseas, but he won a stake at Maidan two starts back. And here's his most recent race at Doha, where he's going to finish third. He's an honest horse. I just wonder... Is five and a half here a situation where he needs pace and trip luck? Yeah, I think it probably is. Um, he's good enough to overcome it, though. If if he can work the right kind of trip, Dan, he, he's good enough to overcome it. Um, that race that we just watched was a little different because they went forward with them. The race two back, though, um, at Maydan, sort of his home base. I know it was six. He put in a really good finish. That just sort of stayed towards the inside, worked his way through a little bit of traffic, but he really ran at the end of the race. I think this horse is good, and I think this is a good spot for him. Beer Can Man's another honest uh, contender going out for trainer Phil D'Amato, making his first start since last year's Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. He won the Jim McKay Turf Sprint at Pimlico. He was a fine third behind Arzak in the Woodford here last year. In the Breeders' Cup, he had a really bad post position. He broke sharp. Juan Hernandez decided, let's go on with it. He's three wide in between horses going into the turn, and I just don't know whether he steadied or he just seemed uncomfortable in between horses, but he lost his momentum for a second, and you can't do that against grade one horses going five eighths yeah great it seemed like one of the pace horses in front of him dan just sort of started getting green started bearing out in front of him and i think it i think it really affected beer can man there and i actually thought he did well to be beaten only you know just over two lengths in that race that was a an underrated performance i i feel like there could be an argument and you, tell me if you agree with this or not 
Is there an argument that he's better at five than he is at five and a half? I wonder about that. I think he's good enough, though, and I think he can get this distance. He's a To me, he's a dangerous horse in here. I don't mind him at five and a half. I think with the right setup and trip, he can get it. I think at five, he has run some good races, but I'm not willing to pigeonhole him just yet. Bad Beat Brian has yet to win at Keeneland on the turf. But he's run some big races. He was 40 to 1 in the spot last year, and he ran second beaten ahead by Caravella. We know how good she is. The question is, what kind of form is he in coming into this race? We haven't seen him since New Year's Eve. He just didn't show a lot of pop in that race, Mike. Maybe this layoff freshened him up a bit. Yeah, it might be. I think maybe he might, he, he needed that. And he's also, he wouldn't be the first horse in the world to go down to Gulfstream for the winter and, and not really run that well. Now he comes back to Keeneland. He hasn't won here, but he's run some good races over this turf course. He's not, listen, I don't love this horse, but he's one of those where you would just look at him and go, oh, bad beat Brian won and he paid $48. That's not a big surprise. He, he was he was pretty logical in that race. Our Zach looked so good in the Woodford last year for Michael Trombetta. He worked out a really nice trip. He sort of was in a stalking position in mid-pack, got to the outside though, blew by the leader and kept on going. And I think he ran a lot better than it looks in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. He didn't have a good post. He's hung out four wide, exiting the back stretch and into the turn. And he loomed, turning for home before flattening out. I just think the ground loss killed him. Yeah, I think it might have. So he did. It did for a brief moment there look like he was going to win again in mid stretch. And then he just kind of came up a little empty at the end there. But another good performance. He was in great form before that. If he runs his Woodford back, and he was, he got a great trip that day, but he really ran. He runs that race back, he wins. Let My People Go was sixth behind a couple of these in the Woodford last fall. Since then, it's been off turf and a couple of synthetic efforts. The last one at Turfway being pretty good on December the 30th, only being beaten the neck. To me, though, he's another horse. While he has shown some speed in the past, I wonder if he wants something to run at and he might not get it here. Yeah, I wonder what kind of trip he's going to pull in this race, too. And I also, I just have some questions, you know, about how good he is. I mean, he got the triple-digit buyer um, winning that race last year. But really, that's the only race of his that I would look at and consider, well, that gives him a chance. And there's other turf races I just don't like that much. Front run, the Fed was very visually impressive winning here during the spring of 2023, but that was an allowance race against slightly weaker competition. He flew home from the back of the pack. I had no chance last time out in the Joe Hernandez, a slow paced race going six and a half, the straightaway six and a half at Santanita, where they ran one, two all the way around the track, the runner up coming back to place with a 96 buyer speed figure. The problem is he might catch a race with no pace again. Yeah, true enough. I mean, he could really be up against it here. We'll see how it plays out. I, I'm a fan of this horse. I think he is good enough to win here if things go his way. And he's supposed to be a pretty good price in this race. And there are question marks surrounding him, but he's good enough to win if things go his way. I wonder if Panther Island's one of the now horses in this field. He's coming into this race off four consecutive good performances since being freshened during the spring of 2023, dead heated for second last time out on the Silks run, and is tactical enough that they're not going to run away from him early. I think he will get another good trip in this race, and he he is in good form here. I feel like he needs to take another forward move if he's going to beat this field. And I personally did not like that loss two stars back. That trip really worked out for him. He made the lead, and, and Coppola just came and sort of went right over the top of him, and that happened again last time. I'm a big fan of the 10-hour shot. He's run very, very well at Keeneland in his career. A win in an allowance race back in the spring of 2023. Runner-up in the Woodford, rallying belatedly behind Arzac. The last race I throw out, it's a synthetic performance that I think a really sharp trainer used as a prep for this. But what did you make of the race at Aqueduct 2 back? Yeah, well, I don't. I feel like he had a, a big excuse that day at Aqueduct. It was going six, and it was also a race where nothing better, who, by the way, is pretty good, just got right to the front there right. and never gave that field a chance. I don't think you're supposed to hold that race against him like you. I thought his Woodford was really good. He did not. He didn't. I don't think he had a big excuse there. He didn't get the trip that Arzak got, though. Arzak got a great trip in there and had to jump on him. Um, I don't know. I'm with you. I just think this horse is good. I think it makes a lot of sense in this race. I think he's going to be a good price in here, and I'm using him. Coppola seeking the hat trick after two consecutive stakes victories going five eighths at Gulfstream, including this race, the Silks run on March the 9th. Looked pretty good doing it. He's down inside, turning into the stretch. He's hoping something's going to open up for him. Yes, I am free is on the lead. Coppola's inside. It's not there inside. Now he's got to get to the outside because he was in tight. He had to swap leads a couple of times. Now he's got to run down a quality speed and he does it. He's sharp. Yeah, he's just best in this race. Once he got enough room, he got the job done. And, and again, going two starts back when he beat Panther Island again, 
he was just best in that race. Once he got through that seam, he had the best finish and got the job done in the best form of his life right now. Can keep close to the pace if he has to. Um, I found it really hard to knock this horse, whether I really like him or not. The number 12, Yes, I Am Free, is a 13-time winner with big early speed. We saw him get run down, though, however, in the Silks Run, where he had a pretty good trip on the lead. Now, I think five is better for him than five and a half, and I wonder if he's in sort of the same form he was in when he was dominating in early 2022. Yeah, I just don't think he he's that horse anymore, Dan, and, and maybe that Silks Run last time. I know it wasn't firm turf, and maybe that's an issue for him now, but that that's a race that the old Yes, I Am Free, he never would have lost. Uh, one also eligible in here. That's the 13 mark of the Z. But boy, he really is going to have to have him nailed on tight against this tough field. Yeah, if he draws in, he's drawn into a pretty tough spot. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Shaker Town Beer Can Man for us, Mike. I think he had a little bit of an excuse in the Breeders' Cup. He's a very honest horse. It's not like he's a one-run closer. It's all about trip. Trip's going to be a big part for anybody in this race. It probably determines the winner. We're hoping Beer Can Man gets it. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that that's just always something to keep in mind in these in this, these kinds of races. But I, we both like him, I think, for the same reasons in here. I threw the Godolphin horse in, yeah. hoping he catches some pace run until you don't have him in there. And I also got our shot in there. I, I flirted with putting our shot on top, the 10. I'm definitely using that horse. 4 3 10, 6 for Mike. 4 6 7 11. We'll see if the beer can man can in the Shaker Town on Saturday. Good luck.